Hi, second grade. It's Mrs. Stolick, and I'm back again for another week of Second Step. And this week, we're learning about being assertive. So we are continuing Second Step, and this week, we're talking about being assertive. In our last session, you learned that self-talk, or talking quietly to yourself in a quiet voice or in your head, can help you focus, stay on task, and ignore distractions. What is what is an example of self-talk you can use to help yourself be a better learner? You can say, stay focused, ignore it. You can say all those things to yourself quietly. Let's review the next self-talk poster on the next slide. Say, focus, ignore distractions. What do I do next? Calm down. Use your self-talk. Telling yourself to focus your attention on the most important thing can help you stay focused on the task. So maybe you're going to get your supplies, you're going to get your red folder, and you're going to um, start writing. So you say, supplies, red folder, start writing. Supplies, red folder, start writing. You could say those little things to yourself to help you stay focused. Now we're going to listen to Be a Learner and um, listen to our Be a Learner song. Listen now. Be respectful. Yeah, yeah. Be skillful. Yeah, yeah. Be a learner. brain building game called doodle dance you're going to point to this um, for this game you're going to focus your attention listen and use your self-talk to remember which doodle matches each dance move so red bug equals shoulder shrug yellow squiggle hips wiggle blue tree lift your knee green clover shake all over purple drops foot hops orange star play guitar so you're going to do these. So we're going to look at our doodles. Let's see what the doodles look like on the next slide. Red bug, shoulder shrug, yellow squiggle, hip wiggles, blue tree, lift your knee, Clo green clover, shake all over, purple drops, do foot hops, orange star, play guitar. So rule one is when you see the doodle, you do the matching dance moves. Remember that they rhyme. So cl green clover is shake all over. Red bug is shoulder shrug. Blue tree, it's lift a knee. So you should be hopping on one leg and lifting up your knees. Orange star, we're gonna play guitar. Yellow squiggle, 
hips wiggle. So you're just hip, shaking your hips on that one. Purple rain or purple drops do foot hops. So hop, 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 hop. So awesome. So when you played the game, I saw so much concentration and self-talk. This is going to be extra important while doing virtual learning at home. So now we're ready for the story and discussion. So this is Connor. He listened to his teacher give directions, but he doesn't understand how to do the math activity. He has tried hard to figure it out by himself, but he just can't. How does Connor feel right now, do you think? He looks like he's feeling kind of sad, frustrated, worried, upset, confused maybe. Those are all feelings that Connor could be feeling. So let me know if you think Connor needs help. So Connor needs help. Let's think about a way Connor could ask for help. Connor could turn and talk to his partner, or Connor could ask the teacher, or um, if there's another adult in the room, a teacher assistant, or a, a parent volunteer. So now that we know that Connor needs to ask for help, how should Connor ask for help? Should Connor whisper and hunch over and say, I need help? Or should Connor scream or throw his paper on the ground and say, I need help? Or should he just sit up nice and tall and raise his hand and say, Mrs. Stalwick, I need help with my math. So we're going to learn about being assertive and about how to talk to people to ask for things that you want. So there's three ways to ask for something, passively, aggressively, or assertively. So passive is when you whisper and you have your head down and you just kind of sit down quiet. But aggressive is when you're just yelling or maybe angry and getting in someone's face. I need help and being bossy and rude kind of as being aggressive. Being assertive is asking for what you want or need in a respectful and kind way. So being assertive means asking for what you need in a calm but firm way. It's best. It's the best way for learners to ask for what they want or need. So be assertive. Face the person you're talking to. Keep your head up and shoulders back. Use a calm, firm voice and use respectful words. Being assertive means asking for what you need or want in a respectful, calm, and firm way. It's the best way for learners to ask for what they need. Now we're going to review our skills. Now you're going to think about how you get better. When you, you get better and you make stronger connections in your brain when you practice, it can make your brain smarter and make your skills more permanent. So we're gonna talk about skills for being assertive. Being assertive means you face the person you're talking to. You keep your head up and your shoulders back. Use a calm, firm voice and respectful words. Let's watch this. Learn to communicate assertively by Blue Jack Kids. types of communication. Passive, assertive, and aggressive. Assertive people speak up for themselves in a calm way and express their opinions. Passive people don't speak up or give their opinions. Aggressive people hurt others with their words or actions to get what they want. Let's practice our communication skills. You are waiting in line. Someone cuts you off. The passive person says, um, and doesn't say anything. waiting in line. Someone cuts you off. The aggressive person says, get lost. I was here first. You are waiting in line. Someone cuts you off. The assertive person says, excuse me. I was waiting in line. Assertive 
assertive communication is the way to go. Blue Jack. Okay, so when you're passive, it looks like you don't make eye contact, you look down, you don't tell the what you're feeling or what you need, and you avoid problems. It might sound like, I'm okay with whatever you want. People don't like, don't think about my feelings. It's fine. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Those are all passive ways of thinking and talking. Aggressive behavior looks like rolling your eyes, pointing fingers, being angry or forceful, and focus your needs on yourself or being rude and bossy. This is what we're doing. You can't play with me if you don't play this game. Statements that begin with you when you attack people like that. Assertive people make eye contact. They are calm but firm. They respect the rights of themselves and the rights of others. So I don't want to play soccer. Do you want to play football instead? Or I feel sad when you say I can't play. So using I statements is a way to be assertive and tell people what you need. Today you learned that being assertive is a respectful way to get what you want or need at school. When Think of a time when you might need to be assertive and ask for help. Who could you ask? Being assertive can help you be, better, be a better learner. What are the four skills for learning that you've learned? Focus your attention, listen, use your self-talk, and to be assertive. Let's review the skills for learning poster as you see them, and then you'll be using all these skills in our second, second step lessons from now on. So focus your attention, listen, use your self-talk, and be assertive. So it's like in our song, focus, attention, listen with your ears, eyes, and brain, use your self-talk, be assertive, and you will gain. So these are all the listening skills for learning. So we're going to finish our lesson by listening to Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. This is about having um, confidence and being assertive and standing up for what you believe in. Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon, written by Patty Lavelle, illustrated by David Catro. Molly Lou Mellon stood just taller than her dog and was the shortest girl in first grade. She didn't mind. Her grandma told her, walk proudly as you can and the world will look up to you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had buck teeth that stuck out so far she could stack pennies on them. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, smile big and the world will smile right alongside you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had a voice that sounded like a bullfrog being squeezed by a boa constrictor. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, Sing out clear and strong, and the world will cry tears of joy. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon was often fumble-fingered. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, Believe in yourself. Believe in you too. So she did. Then Molly Lou Mellon moved to a new town. She had to say goodbye to her grandma and all of her friends and start in a new school. On the first day of school, Ronald Durkin Shrimpo in gym class. When the game started, Molly Lou Mellon caught the football, ran under the legs of Ronald Durkin, and scored a touchdown. All the children thought, wow, she's good. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the 
the second day of school. Ronald Durkin called her Bucky Tooth Beaver. Molly Lou Mellon took out her pennies, stacked ten high on her teeth, and smiled as big as day. All the children smiled with glee, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the third day of school, Ronald Durkin said, You sound like a sick duck. Ha! Ha! Molly Lou Mellon sang out a quack so clear and strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head, and have to go to the nurse. All the children cried with joy to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said that she'd made the snowflake all wrong. But Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful snowflake of all. All the children ooed and ahed, even Ronald. On the fifth day of school, Ronald Durkin brought Molly Lou Mellon a stacking penny for her tooth and smiled at her. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I wanted to tell you that everything you told me was exactly right. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. Okay, and so that concludes our second sub-lesson for this week, so I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.